Now we're going to talk about pi bonding and metal ion complexes. Recall earlier that we talked about the spectrochemical series and that some ligands like chloride and water are weak field ligands resulting in only a small ligand field splitting energy whereas other ligands like cyanide and carbon monoxide are strong field and result in a large ligand field splitting energy. To understand why some donors, some ligands, uh, are weak field and some are strong field, we need to understand how pi bonding works uh, in these metal ion complexes. So if we have a metal ion, it has its set of d orbitals that it's going to use in bonding. And now we'll have a cyanide molecule shown here. That cyanide has a lone pair set which it can donate in a sigma uh, fashion directly into uh, the metal. In this case, we're showing the overlap. This is the Z and X, so this, this is the D X squared minus Y squared orbital. So we see sigma donation uh, directly um, uh, with direct overlap um, with that particular orbital. In addition, though, to this sigma uh, donating ability of the cyanide. It also has well pi bonding uh, orbitals which are filled and empty pi star orbitals. So if we look back to our MO diagram for cyanide we see that it has filled pi orbitals and an empty set of pi star orbitals. And I'm, I've shown one of those pi star orbitals here. Well that pi star orbital has the right symmetry to perfectly overlap with, in this case, a DXZ orbital on the metal. So see how these have the right symmetry to overlap um, to form new bonding interactions. Since the cyanide pi star orbital is empty, this allows the metal in this interaction to donate electron density back onto the cyanide. So we have sigma donation from the cyanide's lone pair um, from cyanide towards the metal, and then the metal can donate electron density back um, into the empty pi star orbitals of the cyanide. And so for this reason, cyanide is called a pi acceptor ligand. Sometimes this type of interaction is called pi backbonding. So we have electron donation from the metal d orbitals to the cyanide's empty pi star orbitals. Now in the case of a ligand like chloride, for instance, chloride also has a set of orbitals with the same symmetry as the pi star orbitals on the cyanide. But in this case, these um, p orbitals on the chloride, essentially, are filled. They have an elect electron pair. And so in this case, instead of backbonding, the chloride is going to donate that electron density in a pi fashion into the DXZ orbital of the metal. So chloride is considered a pi donor ligand. And in instead of backbonding, it is going to contribute electron density from the chloride, its filled p orbitals, into the metal d orbitals. Okay, so the difference here is cyanide with empty pi star orbitals which can accept electron density from the metal and chloride with filled p orbitals of pi symmetry of course that can donate electron density into the metal. Now why does this have the effect that cyanide is a strong field ligand and chloride is a weak field ligand? Well then under, in order to understand that we need to look to our MO diagram for our metal ion complex. And so here we have the octahedral MO diagram that we produced in an earlier video. So this diagram from octahedral metal ion complex. And recall that the ligand field splitting energy is the difference in energy between the what is essentially the d orbitals on the metal. What we would like to know is the effect of pi bonding on the overall splitting uh, energy, ligand field stabilization energy or splitting energy shown here. So this um, splitting energy is going to be affected 
by the presence of pi bonding. So let's first just remove the um, orbitals uh, from the diagram from the original atomic orbitals on the metal and the uh, sigma donors on the ligand and just leave the uh, MOs of the complex in the center um, and specifically of course focus on the um, T2G and EG set um, which are essentially the dxy, dxz, dyz, and dx squared minus y squared and dz squared uh, orbitals of our metal. So in this example we're imagining that we have um, six um, pi donor ligands around our metal and um, with those six ligands we would have 12 um, you know, say they're chlorides, we'd have 12 p orbitals, filled pi uh, symmetry orbitals um, on the ligand. And we're not going to go through this process, but uh, using the um, group theory, we could show that um, some of those uh, pi group orbital sets would be um, of T2G symmetry. Okay, and of course we showed in the previous uh, slide. If I we go back, that you know these we can see that the symmetry of these orbitals um, matches the symmetry of this um, particular d orbital in the metal. In other words, they they overlap nicely. Okay, and here that's represented by the fact that we have the same symmetry uh, T2G of uh, some of our um, of our group orbitals uh, of our ligands um, in the octahedral arrangement. So now those ligand orbitals are filled with electrons. So like a chloride has those lone pairs that are in the p, or p orbitals um, that are overlapping with our orbitals on the metal. Um, these T2G sets in the chloride will be slightly lower in energy and this is important, slightly lower in energy than the T2G set on our metal ion in the complex. So when we form our new bonding and anti-bonding interaction between these, we're going to have a set of orbitals that's going to basically move these orbitals on the ligand down in energy, and it's going to raise the energy of the T2Gs. So we form an interaction resulting in a lowering of the T2G uh, as a bonding set and raises the energy of the d orbitals, which become slightly antibonding. Um, and now, since these were filled, right? Remember, these were filled lone pairs on the chloride. They're going to fall right down into those T2G bonding orbitals. And what's going to happen to our d electrons? Well, they're going to move right up into um, and be raised in energy. So the net effect here of having a pi donor ligand, so uh, orbitals that are uh, filled with electrons, is that we are going to raise the energy of the T2G uh, d orbitals on the metal. Those are raised up. And then what is the effect on our ligand field splitting energy? Well, if we move our EGs over, we see that now our ligand field splitting energy is smaller. And therefore, um, a pi donor ligand, because it raises the energy of the T2G set, results in a smaller ligand field splitting energy. Now, the exact opposite is going to be true for pi acceptor ligands. So we could do the use group theory again to um, assign symmetry uh, labels to our set of group orbitals formed from our uh, 12 pi star orbitals. Imagine we have six cyanides around a metal ion. Um, those, there's going to be, each of those cyanides is going to have two pi star orbitals. You combine those into groups and what we find is that um, there is a set that has T2G symmetry. Well, since these are pi star orbitals, they are going to be higher in energy relative to the metal uh, T2G uh, orbitals. And so uh, in this case, when we form the interaction, the effect is going to be 
that the T2G orbitals of the metal are lowered in energy. Now, since the T2G orbitals of our ligand are empty pi star orbitals, there's no electrons now to dump into this new um, T2G set, um, the slightly bonding set of my um, d orbitals on the metal. Instead, the electrons from the complex fill those uh, orbitals. And so the net effect here, again, is to lower the energy of the T2G orbitals. So again, we have our, look at this from the beginning, we have the T2Gs interact with our metal to form a new bonding and anti-bonding set. The bonding set is essentially mostly um, d orbital character from our metal complex. So the net effect here is to lower the energy of the T2G orbitals on the metal ion complex. Well, what does that do to the ligand field splitting energy? Increases it. So a sigma, I'm sorry, a pi acceptor ligand results in a lowering of the T2G orbitals, resulting in a larger ligand field splitting energy.